should be almost done, and AKA the poison's kicking in, All soon right. he won't be downloading anything. Yeah, there you go. I'm not dropping frames. There you go. You're back in business? Back in business. Look, it's like my internet. Sometimes during the night, for some reason, only during the night, my internet goes to utter fucking shit. Oh no, so we got a dad sale or something, and it, it takes all the bandwidth. And we don't have much, so. It's all good though. I really don't know who the fuck uh, around my neighborhood would be downloading so much porn, though, is the thing. At, ten, at 12 at midnight. Nah, so, I know what it is. Thank you. That's, that's your that's your apple. Don't compare everyone to yourself. <laughs> but I'm better than everyone. <laughs> no, you're not. You know, whatever keeps see, you asleep at night, Cupcake. <laughs> see, this is why I never have confidence. Fuck you guys. You don't have confidence because you don't have confidence. Nothing to do with us. <laughs> Yo, dog, I heard you like confidence, so I put confidence in confidence. When you can have some confidence, you can have some confidence. Yes. So, what do you have today, experiment? Just the CDI um, stuff? Just CDI stuff, yeah. I also tested some Amiga. Software as well, because yeah, I found my old. That was a couple of weeks ago. I found my old um, CD TV and CD32 games. So I thought, you know what? I'll dump all these because they're not easy to get your hands on these days. So I'll just dump them and keep them safe on a hard drive somewhere. And I looked up and I realized, oh hey, I've got time with no name. God, we even have that. Yeah, I'll boot it up later and see what happens. Yeah, I think I remember why I forgot that game existed. Not good. It's barely a game. Ah, I I love the uh, who's the people that makes heavy rain in Detroit. Honestly, it makes heavy rain and Detroit Beyond Human look like fucking masterpieces in comparison. How about you, Apple? What did you get up to? Uh, speed running Halo One, but it's a piece of shit. So why are you speed running? I mean, look, <laughs> because because I hate myself. I mean, I mean, to be least... fair, the the first section, because it's the second level, that the first section is the hardest in the level. Uh, when you just uh, drop down on the ring. Yeah, when you the first level on the ring, because you have to kill the marines and then kill some dropships, kill the enemies on the dropships so very fucking fast that it despawns a dropship. I mean, um, Crash 2, the first thing you do in that entire speedrun is um, slide spin into a uh, TNT and hope you hit it, right? I thought Crash 2 speedrunning was nothing but death warps. No, that's the any percent. I do 100%. <laughs> what a legend. Any, uh, any percent's boring. Because you're right, uh, you're it's like... just dying <laughs> over and over. <laughs> you're, you're, you're right. It's like with uh, Halo, uh, Halo 1 speedruns. Most people do easy, but I play legendary. Well, that's your own number. Because easy. Oof. I mean... Hold on. Second. Yeah. So, here you are swimming in water, but 10 seconds ago you just drowned by touching water. What? There's specific water, bodies of water you can grab onto. How oddly specific. I didn't realize Croc was slightly, but not totally hydrophobic. The pH, the pH in this water is way too fucking high. The only water you can't really go into is ice water, which is only in the ice world. Otherwise it's all lava, so you can tell. Okay, look, we need the pH scale to be 7 exactly. If it's 7.1 or 6.9, we're dead. Hey, he's a saltwater crocodile. Did you ever think about that? No. It needs to be salty. Could be a freshwater crocodile, there's water to be fresh. Ah, oh, yes, I too remember freshwater.jpg. <laughs> I've never heard of that. Speedrunning. Right. Since I got no lies, I'm just gonna beat the level. I'm not gonna even bother doing the special thing because that's where I died last time. What the hell's the special thing? The special, the bonus level to get the extra go, right? Uh. Okay. 
So yeah, over the massive audio desyncs, the CDI stuff mostly works. As I said, I can't fix it, but occasionally it fixes itself. Mm. And every once in a blue moon, it likes to speed up by 300%. <laughs> have, you tried, have you tried blowing on the software? I mean, cartridge. <laughs> you mean disk. I mean, if we want to use CDI cartridges, we'd need the MPEG-1 cartridge, and good uh, for looking look for any one of them these days. Uh, is the stream frozen on anyone else's No, stream? that's yeah. a game. That's a game. Wait, did you crash <laughs> the fish, game? This fish is uh, really scaring me. No, I remember how I told you <laughs> the cutscenes can't load properly because the disc is old? <laughs> oh. We now bring you... <laughs> The dead-eyed fish. I'm kind of hoping. We now bring you the Thousand Yard Stare Hour Variety Show. Drop passwords. Hold on, you need a password. It just so happens, because I'm a crazy nutter, I did actually screen cap one of your passwords. No, I got it. I got the passwords. Oh yeah, I I screen the one from last week. Oh, don't don't right. don't read that! Don't read that! That is nothing. Wait, what are we reading? Hang don't, on, read, don't, read, don't read it! Don't read it! <laughs> Quick, clip it! Clip it! <laughs> I'm using a legitimate. I'm using a legitimate memory card. Oh boo hoo, <laughs> Mister Pirated of Memory Card. You're the worst. You're the reason the game industry is dead. I know. You know what I was gonna say was uh, what? Well, that's your password if I was to pronounce it as one single word. Oh god. Can you say that phonetically? Oh well, yeah, if you wanted to. Okay. Uh, right, up, down, up, left. Down, up, right, down, up, up, right, left, up, down. Got it. <laughs> no, this, this is all right. I'm gonna hold the keep asking the X button. It's a black screen right now. There it is. Get one. You can do it, game. You can do it. This fish scares me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Look at that. That's a career picture, isn't it? <laughs> well, we'll skip it to the next level, boys. I tried. <laughs> On the bright side, we got creepy photos. We can make our way, guys. We can make a creepy pass out of this. Hang on. Speaking of creepy pass, to check the um, chat. Uh, check yeah, you put crud on your kids. Yeah. Oh, I get it, cause there's nothing there. Did they ever talk about the haunted uh, Croc DVD CD? Wait, Croc DVD? Wow, how advanced was the PS One? <laughs> It's on a PS2. Which use CDs? Doesn't the PS2 use DVDs? That's why it was uh, a actually, DVD player. Uh, the PS2 uses two forms of media, three technically. Standard DVDs and DVD9s and blue CD-ROMs. Well, the blue, blue CDs of PS1? Well, blue CD-ROM format is basically a PS1 format for the PS2, just the undercoating's a different colour. It's also why a lot of early PS2 units died. Yeah, it makes sense. And it's why Crash the Rapper Cortex also had terrible loading. Because that's what it came on. Wrong. Is that why it does that? I thought it was just bad programming. Oh, it was a mixture of bad programming and CD format and the PS2 CD read speed being stupid. 
I mean, it's not as slow as the original PS1, but it's down there. Well, we beat the, we beat the boss, guys. Yeah, we did it so fast, I literally blinked and we missed it. Sorry, guys, if you were looking to catch it up in you're just gonna have to catch it in the VOD. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. we may have. Yeah, it's in the VOD, which we may have edited for time, but don't worry. It's in the post. Wink. If I speedrun this game, I just put the final boss pass with it. That's technically me on speedrunning. I dropped the record. Well, I'll just go on YouTube and find the credits and play it there. Does that count as speedrunning? People never thought of these strategies. I don't know why. <laughs> that was bad. No, I don't remember anything past this point of the game. So, it's gonna be fun. Wow, this is gonna be interesting then. Wait, you never beat the game? A long time ago. So I barely remember the boss this point. I barely remember the final boss. Or any bosses by this point, actually. So I'm looking on eBay for CDI systems. Um, I cannot find a single model from the UK. Aren't they, like, incredibly expensive at this point now? Yeah? Well, the triple digits, yes. The issue is, is that a lot of them are dead. And I kind of know why. The good old Jaguar CD syndrome. It's not the CD mechanism that tends to fail, actually. It's the um, built-in battery. I've heard the control ports oh. are pretty bad, too. Oh, they can be. I mean, not as bad the... as the batteries. Wouldn't the battery be easy to fix? You would think that, wouldn't you? Because it is a 20, you know, CR2032. But there's a catch to it. Guess where they put this chip. Yeah, so, you know, they decided the oh-so-bright excuse was to embed the battery inside a ceramic chip. The battery's inside the console's chip? In one of the chips, yeah. Like, physically built into it. You have to decap it to gain access. And here's the thing, if that battery's not there and you turn the system on, uh, it can't initialize NVRAM. And it relies on that to start up, so your system's basically bricked until you fix it. Can you fix it? Yes, you have to decap the chip it contains it and then swap it out. <laughs> and there's two ways you can do that. Oh, Expensive Phillips. process using various acids. Well, you can use several types of acid to melt it and then just grab the battery, which is the most dangerous option. Or you can just take a hacksaw to it and swap it out that way. Oh, Philip, you should just stick with Nintendo. <laughs> the thing is, the CDI wasn't actually meant to be a game console to begin with. Was that supposed to be a CD player or something? Like a multimedia CD player, yeah. You know, things like... I don't know, interactive encyclopedias and all that nonsense. Well, I mean, they we did finally come out, though, didn't they? Pardon? They did come out in the CDI, the interactive encyclopedias and all that, though. Yeah, that's what its main purpose was for. Multimedia CDs. Not for games. They only started shoehorning the games in once they realised the system wasn't selling. And they still have the licenses left over for Nintendo characters from the failed PlayStation slash uh, Super Nintendo CD. So basically, what? it was just a um, overcomplicated DVD player made to play games. <laughs> basically, yeah. Look, I'm just happy we get that good old spiritual successor to Zelda 2. It's the CDI games with good games. Fuck you. Nintendo guys. wasn't glad about it. <laughs> Oh, Dana they, they Shrink, they're so glad about it, they won't even acknowledge its existence because it's just that good. Mm -hmm. Well, the Hotel Mario is actually alright. It's not the worst game in the world, it's not the best either, but it's certainly playable. <laughs> it's because of the CDI, we'll never get a remake of Zelda 2. Remember when they were going to make a sequel to Super Mario World on it? And there's a Found that. leak. Yep, Mario. got it. Don't forget about the the Mario Around the World game, something like that. That's the Mario oh. World successor. Yeah. Yeah, it was called Mario's Mario Wacky Odyssey. World. And yeah, it was basically supposed to be like Odyssey, where you travel around the world to different locales. Except they were based off real world locations. 
and yeah, well, find Dark City's well. real. Um, Apple, it's real take, in my take, heart, take, damn it. Take, Apple, have a beer, take a, take a seat, we need to talk about it. But I'm a string, I'm 18, you live in America. Come here, come here, and then you can have a drink. <laughs> in Australia, it's 18. And I think it is in the UK as well. It Isn't is. America one of the few who does 21 to drink? Yeah. Just like with the whole Fahrenheit thing. Although, if you're under parental supervision and you're in your own home, you only have to be about four years old and you can drink some alcohol. Yep, same rule here. Also, okay, if you're I'm in sorry, a pub, also if you're in a pub, with your, <laughs> also if you're in a pub with your parents and you grab a give a meal, you can have one beer. Laws are weird. I think we just blew, I think we just blew Apple's mind. <laughs> I'm sorry, four years old? Doesn't that that should fucking kill your liver? Yeah, and we're still alive, aren't we? I had a beer when I was like 16. And I was with my parents, so it was legal. Get me, I had a full camera of lager when I was like what, six years old? Basically the law is Apple, if you if you're if you're with your parents, you can do whatever the hell you want unless you're at home. <laughs> Finally I can kill someone. Not that. <laughs> well, only if you use one hundred percent pure alcohol. Although I suppose vodka would be close enough. <laughs> you should remember some idiots a couple of years ago drinking two pints of that stuff straight in one go. Or was it two? Yeah, it was a two-litre bottle. Oh, gone in about two minutes into his body. Oof. That fucked him up for the rest of the night. I don't know what the hell happened there, but I'm gonna take it. What are they jumping out of exactly? Uh, they're scorpions. So. Yeah, I mean, what's the green stuff they're hopping out of? That's a great question for another time. Um, uh, default Nickelodeon slime. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do, that'll do. Well, I mean, they have to bury it in the desert after the hotel failed. Still sad about that. <laughs> Ah uh, yes, as an ex-patron. Yes. It was fun. The service was terrible, but it was still fun. <laughs> I remember like our room didn't get service to like far no, no like six PM that night. And we can't be in our room till it's serviced. I think the worst hotel I've ever known, and this is going back from when I was a wee one, would have been one called Pontins in Southport in the north of England. Yep. Pontins is like a really low budget hotel slash theme park thing. Ah, uh, okay. When, uh, and by budget, I mean the sand pit is literally just a bucket with some sand they took off the beach nearby. <laughs> and um, to give you an idea, they last updated their stuff in the early to late 90s. And it hasn't changed since. So it's a bit dated. That's an understatement. The rooms aren't upkept whatsoever. Like, I've seen images of, like, present day. They're falling apart. Covered in the all sorts of dirt and diseases and in mold. Exposed wiring. When I was in San Francisco, we were going to stay at a hotel, but we, we, we swapped it out when we realized how bad it was. We were going to stay at a hotel that was listed for four people. But it was a singular room with a microwave, which had a double bed and a couch that went out into a fold-out bed. In a single room. We didn't laugh. Yeah. We didn't say that long. No. <laughs> Bet you didn't. Especially since I had to actually, um... Go and get into another room when my dad when my dad was snoring one night, because I couldn't sleep because of it. <laughs> But, um, yeah, it was pretty bad, and the staff won't really do anything to fix it either, because if they ain't pissed off their heads, good god, they just don't give a shit. And it's been bad now for at least a couple of decades, and I'm just surprised the place hasn't been shut down. I mean, you, you said it was basically incredibly cheap, right? It's probably why they get away with it. The thing is, though, it's near Southport, and Southport, as like a seaside town, is nowhere near as good as it once was. Seems like a cheap version of Blackpool at one time, 
and then come around, I think it was the late 2000s. So just around the time I moved off the mainland altogether, the main theme park there shut down for bankruptcy. And it's never come back since. So, other than shopping, there's really no major reason to go over there now. God damn it, I couldn't see in the dark. <laughs> well, I mean, you could always adjust the gamma. No, 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 it was meant to, it's meant to be dark. But again, even just like going around the hotel, it looks oppressive. You know, we're gonna skip, we're gonna skip levels. I, I beat it. Yeah, we beat it. What do you mean about the start of level? No, no, this is, this is clearly the end. You know, if you've not seen this game before. If I get to the bonus room and I die and I get a game, I'm just listening to the other day. I don't have time. Ain't nobody got time for that. Level 5, guys, we did it. I mean, wow, that was just so quick. <laughs> like, I think we were there in the flash. No, you, you can jump across that pit. It's about a five. It's about five frame jump. We so see you need to do specific inputs while you're in there to extend your jump, but it's yes, frame put perfect. Put the controller on your head. Double take three times, then AGDQ bands And it's necessary to get to the world record because the world record is frames apart. <laughs> I love Super Mario Bros. in the NES. I was waiting for someone to make a reference. Yeah, that's what I was referencing. Those guys are insane, by the way. I mean, <laughs> that says something when you can only beat it, be, or to be honest with this, right, you can only beat it by like 21 frames. I see you, Secret, by the way. Now you see, if you use the Famicom Disk System version, you could technically beat all those speedrunners in one go, yes? Um, I'm, I don't know if it's like put in categories, like which version you use. I don't think anyone he runs the Famicom disc version anyway. I doubt anyone outside of Japan even owns it, other than a handful of people. That's a real advantage you'd have there. It probably wouldn't be allowed. You'd probably have to just play on our original NES. I mean, I've got the disc version because it's on the same disc as my um, copy of Super Mario Brothers 2 Lost Levels. It's just you flip one side to choose what game you want. I'd love to get my hands on all night Nippon Super Mario Bros. though. Experiment, wait, you could take the world record. Well, of course, because here's the thing if you're doing the Famicom Disc version, you don't even need to go to the World 8. Hell, you just don't even go further than World 1 2, technically. Because everyone knows uh, the Minus World, right? Yeah. The Famicom Disc version is utterly different and it's actually beatable. Um, basically, when you beat the Minus World Castle, you get taken back to the title screen, where the game thinks you've already beaten it, so you can select the worlds. In other words, you've technically beaten the game. Easy world record, boys. I'm just resetting the level. I want my last I wonder why you're just continuously just jumping in. I thought I could make that jump, but apparently you can't, so I'm gonna reset the level and get my life back. I'm good at video games. And it's the level is called the Leap of Faith. It is actually. I swear that's actually a gameplay mechanic. <laughs> Killing yourself? I didn't know this was for what was the Persona game that you that you shoot yourself in the head? Persona 3. Persona 3. Yeah, there is one. I said it. Ooh, I don't know what that means because I never played a Persona. Well, actually, game. I'll give. I, I think it's better than Persona One and Two and, and Two Eternal Punishment, but I'll play this in Sinnoh Three. Hello. I, don't, I don't. I don't mind Persona Three Portable because that fixed a good number of issues the original game had. Yeah, I'll play. I'll play Portable over Persona Two in general. But Hello. if you're talking about like 
original Persona 3, I'll play this in Cinema. Oh, original. fuck no. I play this in Cinema original Persona 3, because... Uh, yeah. Oh, you could go for just... the um, FES edition, which has the answer, which is somehow an even worse bloody game. No, I actually like the answer. It's just that, found, unfortunately, the gameplay's still not fixed, and they made it harder. Uh, I... I just find it too repetitive, so usually I just say, if you want the answer, just look up a YouTube video of all the cutscenes. It's say, easier. I just want to say, if you want to play Persona 3, just play Portable, because the female route fixes so much in that game. Oh, yes, it does. So much. God, you fucking weebs. I, I know absolutely not a thing of Aiden it's just, Gandhi. It's just, the same so they released, it's just the same they released it on the PSP. And the Vita, technically. Yeah, but I would, I mean, like, I, I would put a straight Vita version. Well, I mean, Persona 4 Golden's based on the P3P engine. Is it? Really? Yeah, there's leftover content from Persona 3 Portable just casually sitting on the cartridge. Is the P3P engine based on the PS2 engine, though? Yeah, it's not surprising, because PSP hardware is similar in architecture construct to the PS2. Yeah. Nowhere near as powerful, but yeah, it's close. It's pretty close. It's definitely bigger than better than PS1. But um Well the, well, the PS1 was just a stock risk 3000 CPU with a custom GPU on it. Mm. But um The funny thing is that you can get N64 running pretty well on the PSP. Can you? Yeah. Reason being is that the um, PSP CPU is in the same family as the N64s. Oh, okay. So, That's... for the CPU functions, they're kind of binary compatible. I mean, you still got to emulate the um, RCP? Or is it the RS? I mean, if they're a similar architecture, that means that it must be able to run you know, to all N64 games then pretty well. Well, so it can run in theory, yeah, but it doesn't have the display or the GPU for the N64. In any related way, so you still have to emulate that, and well, that's where your issues start because PSP is not very powerful. No, it's not. <laughs> I mean, at stock, it's 222 megahertz. The highest it can go is 333. I want to try to get a Vita. I want to try to get a Vita at some point and just hack it. I have no, I have a Vita already, but I want to get another one. Just hack it. I'd recommend a PS TV then if you want to hack a Vita. I want a portable though. Okay, then go for a 2000, or if you want a feeling fancy, a 1000 model. I'd probably go with it. I've, I have a 1000 model already, and the OLED screen is beautiful, man. Get a Nintendo Switch. An actual good portable console. Good job, Sony. Yeah, I've got an um, 2000 Japanese model. So that's the, um, that's a slim, yeah. Yeah, that's the slim with the inbuilt memory and it's the LCD screen. But honestly, it's comfier to hold in my experience. I just don't like the LCD screen in comparison. I get why they did it, it was make it cheaper, but... Well, that and the OLEDs and the Vita were still kind of early implementations, so they can suffer from burning quite easily. A little. So you tend... So you tend to get like dark blotches on the OLED screen? I do have dark blotches on my one, but it, you only notice it when the screen's black. I mean, it's I did have a 1000, but the blotches became bad enough, I could see them even on like a white screen, so it was just... Yeah, we need to fix that. Oh, no, wait, look, the slim model's out. Yeah, no, it's not that bad for me. I just went sod it, let's get a slim unit from Japan. Oh, look, there's a white one with cyan back, we'll have that. Fair enough. In but if Japan, you want to have the... so. Oh yeah, they've got loads of colors to choose from in Japan. But um, for hacking, I wouldn't recommend getting a big memory card. I have. Yeah, get like one. I have, you have 64. 64. I have 64. I think it was. Oh. Is that the biggest one? I have the biggest one. That's the... Yeah, that's the biggest one they ever made. Oh yeah, they they're pricey nowadays. Mm mm. Yep, I've got a 64 gig myself. I just use it as a spare drive now because my main memory card is a 200 gigabyte SD card. Oh ah, yeah, you can tell me about that, yeah. Doesn't the Vita have its own special type of SD cards instead of the normal ones you normally yep, have? Yep, and they were yep. stupidly, stupidly expensive as hell. 
And they also have a high failure rate. Uh, I, I, I might have failed yet, so... Oh, I've heard horror stories of a lot of 64 gig memory cards dying. I wouldn't be surprised if some mini SDs in general have high um, failure rates. Because, I mean, someone has looked at the um, structure of those proprietary memory cards, and they are basically just modded micro SD cards. That was probably the dumbest idea they did. But if you use an ST2 Vita, you just put basically an SD card adapter into the game cartridge slot instead. Hmm. And then you can just use whatever size you want. You still need to hack the system to use it, but, you know, upwards of 200 gig space suits me. Options are good. And then I could just use the um, 64 memory card as like a spare drive, if you will. Mm. Just to store like smaller files on. And of course, if you hack your Vita, you've basically got a full PSP as well. With a nicer screen. Yeah, that that's sick. the thing that sucks about the Vita's backwards compatibility. I don't want to play Crisis Core. I would love to play <laughs> Crisis Core. But can it, play, can it run Crisis? It can! They just won't let us. I mean, you, you can even you can even mod some of the Vita games now to run at higher clock rates and even higher resolutions. Why weren't they made to run like that in the beginning? I don't fucking know. Apparently, well, Persona 4 Golden was the poster boy. That doesn't run at native resolution. That's like sub 400, I think. I wouldn't be surprised. It's Atlas. I and love Atlas's games, but my god, they screw the consumer base a lot. Hello, we're Europe. They hate us. Yeah. Hey, I only just found out the other day we're actually getting a Daisy game the same day. That shocked me. I was I was thinking we're gonna have to wait a month at least for them. Fucking hell, they feeling all right. Yeah, yeah, no. Europe doesn't get fucked over that often. You got Yoshi's Woolly World about a month earlier than me. No, no. Oh, Atlas. Yeah, um... Atlas hates us. There's only one game where they preferred Europe over, um... America, and even then, oh, it was just announcing the release date. Persona 2 Innocent Sin had their release date announced sooner than the American re release date. But it was still like, a the release date still wasn't like, the same. Oh, and you remember the fighting game they region locked the European version for? They region locked all of them. People, people complained okay. about that even for the Japanese version because they wanted to import the Japanese version because that was released several months before the American version. Yep. Or oh, you know, you just wanted different options. Yeah, Atlas are not good. They got their customers. They make fantastic games, but releasing two hundred dollars worth of DLC for two dancing games released on the same day instead of combining the two of them to, to make it a good deal. Yeah. Well, on the bright side, I mean, you can run later firmware Vita games on lower ones now. Really? How'd they get that working? I am not sure. I've only described it as voodoo magic. That's how I would describe it. Basically, the idea is, is that you use the later firmware to decrypt the main executable. And then you basically patch it so it runs on any firmware regardless. So you basically like make a compatibility pack and then you inject the compatibility pack into the hack system on the lower firmware and the game will run no issue. Honestly, straight up, since Atlas doesn't like putting the games, uh, they're actually releasing them in Europe. Honestly, that's one of the few points where I say, you know, piracy is honestly okay there since they don't release the game there. No, they release the game, it's just they always like, take way too long to release it. Well, they don't even have a European branch to begin with. They usually relied on Square Enix or other third parties to do the job. Ubisoft released Persona 4 in Australia. Ubisoft. Wait, what? Ubisoft? Ubisoft. I'm not joking. You can look what it up. Why? I couldn't tell you. It seems so random to have a French company release an Australian game. It's even weird because they're not the ones that produced a lot. Like. In Australia, we have Bandai Namco who manufacture pretty much every game. Like, it can be published in Australia by, like, another company, but it's Bandai Namco that man manufactures it in Australia. And what? I think Nintendo as well. I think Nintendo have their own plan, but that's it in terms of, like, who manufactures games. 
Uh, this level's called Life's a Beach. Yeah. Nice. If you if you look at like every um like if you look at the Bandai Namco Australian account, they like tweet every game announcement because they're the ones that manufacture it. <laughs> well, it was kind of weird that Ubisoft all people was the one who manufactured it for Australia specifically. It all seems like completely bizarre. It's just. Why? It's like two polar opposites that shouldn't meet. I'm surprised I said. Oh, no, there it is. Though I think nowadays for Europe they handle all the publishing stuff over to Deep Silver. Uh, yes, but I don't know if they're publishing the new Persona games. Well, I mean, Alice is owned by Sega now, and I think. Deep Silver got bought recently. Did they? I think they did. Um, if it was, it wasn't by Sega. I, I doubt it was by Sega. It would have been someone else. It might have been that Chinese company. I forgot what it's called. Um, uh, the one that owns PUBG Corp and Epic Games and all that. Tencent or something like that. I can't remember. Blue, Blue Wall or Tencent? Tencent, Tencent. That's it, Tencent. Oh, uh, THQ Nordic for Deep Silver. They did? Yeah, around February this year. THQ Nordic have been really busy. Didn't they, they die for a little while? I forget. Well, uh, not even that. They all catch media. So, uh, THQ Nordic was a originally a development team from THQ that was allowed to self-publish its own stuff after THQ went bankrupt. They didn't get sold, basically. Like and anything that didn't get sold? Um... I think they were. I think they actually had to pay for their own freedom or something like that. I can't remember. I just know that they were part of THQ, but now they're not <laughs> because THQ is no more. Rest in peace. Well, but, well but, that's because of the fucking you draw tablet nonsense. Yeah. Oh, more than just that. There's a whole. There's a whole series of events that happened. Um. But I was. Uh. But yeah, they're, they're pretty much becoming like as big as the original THQ now. <laughs> Yep, they acquired Koch Media, the parent company of Silver, in a deal worth 1. Point, sorry, 121 million euros or 150 US million US dollars. I am shocked that they're doing so. They did a THQ, a THQ company is doing so well. I'm more curious to see where the fuck they got all that money from because THQ Nordic did not seem like a big company. They make Dark Side, which is a pretty loyal fan base. Oh yeah, because then they released like one version for the Wii U after the Wii U was dead and buried. Yeah, and it didn't sell well apparently, but they did it. A Wii U game that didn't sell well? No. It's set it was the last sell. game released on the Wii U so far. I mean, not counting the eShop, I mean, probably. Well, it won't be the last one string, because if you remember, Just Dance 2019 is coming to the Wii U. True, true. And the original weight. True. True. <laughs> Why do you think they keep it around? I mean, all I was what? waiting for was the... I was honestly waiting for a PS2 version, to be honest. Yeah. You, know, you know it's coming out in Kinect, right? Xbox 360 Wait, what? Kinect. The Wait, Xbox really? 360? Oh my god, that thing has been dead and buried for donkeys. Yeah, it's coming out on that. I mean, to Who be fair, the just, just Dance games were the only thing that worked on Kinect. I mean, you'd yeah, be shocked how many people bought Kinect. People think it failed, but no, it was actually a super success. Like, everyone I know who has an extra 660 has a Kinect. Well, that was the version 1 for version 2. Eh, it kind of bombed. Yeah, the Xbox One version bombed, because at that point, everyone kind of was like, I'm oh, on motion controls. And the fact was, the by Xbox that point, one... the motion controls fad was dead and buried. Mm. What was in Apple? Fuck, what was I saying? Good question. <laughs> I mean, at least Sony managed to save, quote unquote, save their PS move by making the peripherals needed for the VR. Still, I'm still waiting for them to release better controls before I get a move, before I get a VR. I mean, PS VR. You don't like the you don't like the rape sticks? I have an Oculus Rift. I know what good motion controllers are like.
Because again, doesn't the PS Move still use the PS3 style analog stick and D-pad? It's it's a PS3 Move pretty much. Just released on a um. PS4 for basically. PS4 basically. It still uses the same camera setup. <laughs> I well, love just with a better camera. Hmm. I remember when that was announced as the PlayStation Arc and people went nuts over it. Which one? The PlayStation? The PlayStation Move, it had the original code name of the PlayStation Arc, ARC. Ah, uh, okay. Then people just consider it a Wii, a Wii coin. I mean, it was, it technically. Well, that's what a lot of people thought it was, it was just technically a Wii coin. But from what I can gather, they basically entered development independent of one another at the same time, more or less. Maybe like a couple of months, maybe a year or two off. Because I know the Kinect was originally um, designed for the Wii. Wait, was it? Yeah, the people who um, created the prototypes to the Kinect, they went to Nintendo first to try and sell it to them, and Nintendo just basically told them to f off. So it was just, you know, we've got the Wii mode, that's all we need. And then we... Microsoft took it. Yeah. I'm not shocked. That's how this industry tends to work. Remember, the Sega Saturn was going to be both the N64 and PlayStation at one point. Um, hey, we can't forget the old time classic Sega Pluto. Uh, Wasn't that the what? 32X and Genesis combo? No, that was the Sega Neptune. The Sega Pluto was a redesigned Sega Saturn model. What did that have in it? Um, different disc train mechanism and a built-in modem. And a different external casing design. I think there was only two prototypes of them made, and only one of them has been found, as far as I'm aware. Well, I mean, how long did it take for the PlayStation and Nintendo design to come out? Prototype to be found. That took, say, that took decades. Uh, that, was, that was like back in 2017. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it, it was took technically decades. found. I mean, it took decades, yeah, it took decades from. To be publicly released, yet, yeah, but it was technically found around 2005. Oh, yeah, but he just didn't realize. <laughs> Pretty much. Fuck, I still remember seeing the PS Vita prototypes. Some of them are still out there in the wild for uh, if you know where to look. They're based on the PSP Go design. You know, like the old sliding phone. Oh, is that? Oh, ew. Yeah, those models are hard still out there somewhere, and they've even got an early version of the PS Vita's operating system. Much different about it? Mm, looks more or less the same as the final version, although I believe they scrapped that design for overheating issues. How did they... You mean, oh, like they okay. should have done Note 7. Well, bear in mind, the PS Vita CPU can theoretically run at a maximum of 2 gigahertz, but because of overheating issues, Sony downclocked it to 333 megahertz. Yeah, that makes sense. The highest that can go is 444, and that's with a soft mod, or you turn the Wi-Fi off. Well, I mean, the PS Vita doesn't have a fan in it. Like, the Switch, no, it's all... Switch, the Switch needs a fan and runs at 2 gigahertz. <laughs> It doesn't even run at 2 gigahertz, it's Sorry. 1 point something. Yeah, you're right. The Nvidia Tegra can run at 2 gigahertz, but they didn't do that. Or CPU. No, can. it's all CPU can, but it's not clocked to run that way. And Nintendo's basically rigged the separate ARM cores to run oddly. I don't remember the specifics off the top of my head. But I mean, the Switch basically is just a stock NVIDIA Shield. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, made with a different um, operating system on it, and the PS Vita was basically just then standard mobile hardware, or severely underclocked. It also has its own, um... Oh, what's it called? Like, DirectX. Uh, it's not, I forgot what it's called. You mean an API call? Yeah, it has its own API. That's what I've mean. tinkered with the Vita's stuff, and it's not really proprietary. It's actually OpenGL, 
the PS Vita. PS Vita, yeah. The standard they used was OpenGL for graphics, OpenAL for audio. That's what they had us using when they were prototyping the PlayStation Suite development kit. Well, before it became PlayStation Mobile. Hmm. Alright, game. Oh, let's go know, back. Let's see if you can load this one. Be good. I still remember being told, hey, they're having the private beta for this software development kit for the Vita. Do you reckon you can get in? Filled in the application. About three weeks later, it's just, yeah, here's the code to download the, the um, early builds. Go nuts. I've still got it sitting on the hard drive somewhere. Uh, it's like the 1.0 version. It's probably been leaked online. Well, the later versions have, yeah, but not the 1.0 one. Oh. Now you just experiment. Well, if I can find which hard drive I've got it on. You got yourself, you got your hand on some video game reservation shit there, man. Or you could sell it on eBay and be a douche. <laughs> I'll release it for money. People have done that. They have. I'm good at video games. Come on, Stray. <laughs> that last one was on purpose. I was trying to, I'm just kidding, mm. another life. Oh, and just for one life. I technically own the world's first uh, Super Mario ROM hack. Do you make well, the first. first one to make it, are you saying? Well, the first one that was widely spread major. What was that one? A little version of Tonkaichi Mario. <laughs> Let's say, you didn't make Kaizo, did you? If you made Kaizo, I hate you. <laughs> I didn't make Kaizo, fuck no. I'm not what? that insane. Or nasty. String. Just keep going. Basically, at some point around the, like, 97, 98, an editor came out there nowhere called the Tonkaichi Editor. And that basically allowed to edit several games on the Famicom disc. One of them was Super Mario Brothers. You couldn't change it yourself, it pretty much modified the disc itself into Tonkaichi Mario. Okay. And... I... have not seen much of it on the internet. I've seen a few murmurs, maybe one particular dump, but I've not seen my version in particular. Because apparently, again, it wasn't physically sold, if you will. It was sort of made digitally and then spread around as an unofficial hack. I didn't realise it until a few weeks ago. She's like, oh shit, I've been sitting on this for how long? It beats Kaiser Mario by at least a decade. Wow. And it seems to be just as fucking difficult as well. Although, at least with Kaiser, you've got the Super Mario World physics with this. It's the original Mario Brothers. Mm -mm, uh, yeah, pop, no. I thought it was called The Lost Levels. This came after The Lost Levels. But before Super Mario Bros. 3, I think. I think it used to be sold in like old NAF magazines and newspaper ads. Probably for the equivalent of like what, maybe five, ten bucks back then? But the one version I do want is all Night Nippon Super Mario Bros. Oh, goddamn, this hitbox is bigger than it should be. <laughs> Let's have a look. Okay, how the fuck does that work? You are nowhere near him. You got a little frame data. Well, so this music is like something I expect from Phantom of the Opera or something like that. There we go. I don't know. Maybe this dude wants Croc to be his wife. Croc's a boy. Alright, and then we get the last one. change. Alright, because I got. You yeah, know. But yeah, All Night in the Poem was basically another ROM hack of Super Mario Bros. But it also mixed in some levels from Super Mario Bros. 2 Japan. I guess I put in a 100% code by accident, but we're going this in order. Well, if it saves us putting in passwords later, I'm not knocking it. That's my view. I might be able to beat the game, but if I, I, I gotta end the stream in an hour, so we'll see. Uh, where do I go? There it is. 
So All Night in the Burn was basically like a radio show in Japan. Must have been popular enough. The licensed Nintendo to do basically a ROM hack of Super Mario Brothers. I think it was handed out as a contest item. Oh, okay. So it's not exactly easy to find. I've only ever seen one copy of it in the wild. And you've got a download of version of it, yeah? ROM. Well, you can find it easily enough if you know where to look. Take it down or it'll come back, Nintendo. Well, I mean, I think the entire Famicom Disk Library is on a site that's protected from copyright strikes anyway. How? I don't know. Certain law provisions, I'm guessing. I believe it's based somewhere in San Francisco. I mean, it's like if you've got the great um, sea bolts up in the Arctic Circle, this is basically the digital equivalent. Only it's in San Francisco. Sure, I, I thought you were about to just jump off and off, off the cliff. Okay, maybe there's an invisible floor. Oh, that's right. That's what I was thinking. Is there like invisible blocks there, like Crash One in the um, Dark Temple levels? No, I don't do. Okay, was I the only one to expect those metal blocks to just crush croc? I thought I they too, but I'm pretty sure they can, so... Well, Shereen was standing where they spawned, I was expecting him to clip inside of them and get pushed out of the level. Street Drone Strats. Well, this is a crushed twin sanity. He's... Good news, he can oh, be crushed. God. I think someone just found yeah. out. Yeah, there he goes. Ha. Huh. It was a sac- thank you for your sacrifice, good croc. Yes, croc blessed in this weirdly dark cathedral thing. I love Dark Souls, croc the- Waiting for the croc, uh, the- the, the ins- the insane duology of Croc, the dark, the next Dark Souls. So, something like, I don't know, Croc Rescaled Edition? <laughs> and I brought back by Argon, no, oh. Oh yeah, they <laughs> gone. No, what, what, if there isn't, a, there isn't an Argonaut Nordic or anything? No, I don't think so. It's long gone. Yeah, they've been gone for at least nearly two decades now. <laughs> I mean, at least until you see a reboot from, at least until you see a, you know a game to like from the maker, from the from the maker or something. Croc, the one, yep, that's right, one guy. And we got one guy from the team. From some guy we found who used to work on Croc. Eh, Bobsy Lely. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, a good fucking game. <laughs> Did you ever find out who voiced Bubsy in that indie version from last year? He posted it on Twitter, so I imagine he did. So that was apparently driving him nuts on Twitter. Puzzles! <laughs> I love puzzle. Jenga. What was the same for thing? Oh yeah, all night nippon. So basically, again, the major difference other than levels was the graphics. Of which game? Uh, Mario Super Mario Brothers. String, string. Ha well, well done. I don't know how I'm doing. I've been doing that old game. Hmm. Depth perception. What's that again? Oh come on. It's uh, it's like the trick in in in, in the Smash in Smash Bros with Yoshi, where you can ground pound them, grab the ledge quicker but if you fuck up you kind of kill yourself so yeah the graphics are replaced with like the heads of DJs so you've basically replaced the Goomba with like this human head with feet wearing sunglasses can we get some fan art please and there's also they replaced the piranha plants with like DJ head and torso just popping out of pipes and they changed the Starman graphic. 
but I don't know if I want to say what it is. Uh... Because I they mean... changed it into a religious symbol. Oh, the yeah. Jewish star? No joke, that's what they changed it into. Wait, what game are you fucking talking about? All Night Nippon Super Mario Brothers. The Rum Act has been talking about that the whole time. I was playing Halo for a little this while. Isn't, this isn't an unofficial one, this is completely official Nintendo made. Man, Miyamoto got really drunk. Yeah, there we go. Found a long play. That was quick. Let's show the graphic of what I'm referring to. Well, it'd be nice if we click on the damn thing. Oh boy, color emulation on this video is not very good. Well, I hope it shows off at some point, but eh, I'll just um, grab this. Also, I never forget, Spyro got delayed, but let me be honest, that's not a really good thing. Apparently it's because of the whole um, disc thing. I mean, I imagine it also, hopefully, the game will be... Uh, whether or not the game would have... If it did launch in September, if it would have had bugs. Which game hey. is this? Spire. Insane. Because if they ah. literally, because if they rush it to the world to the point of where they didn't get all games on the disc, I wouldn't have high hopes for the quality. Well, I'm guessing uh, that the reason that the whole three games weren't going to be on the disc was not because of space, it was because the games weren't finished and they were going to finish it before it was finally released. That would be the most plausible answer. And it's something that Activision has done before. Yep. So I wouldn't be surprised that was the reasoning. Although I imagine if there was enough frustration about it, they might include it on the disc now. <laughs> it better be on the disc by now if they delayed it. Look, I just want a PC port or a Switch port announcement here. Oh, you'll yeah. get one? Just gotta wait a year. Aww. Look, it's on the fucking Xbox, and games rarely get put on the Xbox nowadays. It's been included on the Xbox, because it probably costs them nothing to port it. Well, considering the PS4 and Xbox One are pretty much the same thing, just slightly different configuration. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, the main difference is they... What are we trying to avoid? Oh, they're trying to do some climbing. Oh, I there, see. And I can't spin on there, and I can't attack, so I just gotta, I guess, run. Is there no way you can get on top of the grating? I tried, but I think they figured that part out and prevented me from doing it. Well, yeah, Apple, you can find um, All Night Nippon in the chat. Looks okay, let's see. Oh my god, that is low. There's a secret in here as well, I just remember. Oh my god, I don't think- Oh, what the fuck? Again, all official. Oh, man. Is all this changed to the Goombas, the star, and the, uh, piranha plants? Yeah, and there's also some levels that were inserted from Lost Levels into Super Mario Bros. 1. A sequel to rival the quality that was Lost Levels. Yeah, to give- I don't know which ones were specifically, but the one I do remember that they did was that they swapped out 8.4 for the Lost Levels version. That's a real difficulty curve, then. I think there was another advertised thing like this Nintendo did. Advertised? Like... Yeah. So everyone remembers the Mario Brothers arcade game, right? Yeah, versus? The original. Not versus. Um, this was done, I think, for a Japanese noodle company. I'll see if I can find it. But it has, like, basically the same thing with, like, custom intro and. 
other silly bits in it. Let's see if I can find it. You're gonna fucking love the fine art of those painted glass. Found it. Here's a pair of fucking googly eyes. <laughs> fucking fine art. And they say art is dead. Video games aren't art. Explain this. Video games aren't art. It says now one dead guy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I found it. I'm a, how the hell do you pronounce this? Kai Tatika Mario Brothers. 1988. Okay, similar time frame. Oh wow, the changes are obvious from the word go. Oh, I love oh, from the makers of Pokemon. Let's go, Mario. Let's go. There was even an um, contest in it by looks for. Oh, here you go. Instant miso noodles and ultra zuke. Mm, that, that, that is some that is some close platforming. You said this game was easy. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Fucking hell, skinny your teeth there, son. Now you get on top. Now you've got to do a leap of faith onto this one specific platform to trigger a war point. Look, Sorry, I may okay. regret this, but I want to check if there's anything behind you. Unless it's a sign that says we're sorry, I'm not buying it. <laughs> we're sorry it knocks you off the platform. No, just a bunch of uh, gaps in between the wall. It's... Yeah, it's just loops. It's just a sign that says I'm sorry, but as you approach it, this boxing club just comes out of nowhere and punches you off the platform. <laughs> oh, I love the show Wipeout. <laughs> yeah, you can find the uh, Mario Brothers thing in chat as well, Apple. Finally, some high quality shit. Oh boy, now we're in Castlevania. Kinda. What is a crocodile? It's a fucking dog. It's a fucking Flor Florida man alligator. Florida man pet. What is a croc? Nothing but a miserable little alligator. But enough talk. Let's make some shoes out of you. Oh god. Oh boy. <laughs> I, I know, I want an image of that. Look, we had Bloodstain, which which brought back the stiff jump. I want now. I want a three D platformer that gives me tank trolls. <laughs> Get one to day, it up. One day. Get to, fuck. Who was the people that made Bloodstained? Uh, Inti Crates. Yeah, uh, they made the um eight bit one. Yeah, I mean to be fair, everything they make is eight bit. They made the Mega Man nine and ten, right? Yeah, they also made um. The Mighty Blaster, nine. Blaster Master. Oh yeah, they made night, night, money number nine too. Never forget. Oh. That's very disappointing. Oh no, boy. I thought, I thought they made good games. Uh, I'll do a Apple. I'm sure it's good enough. I was looking forward to Bloodstain, which got cancelled. Oh, not cancelled? Uh, delayed again. <laughs> Streaming. Well, Bloodstain Man. did get cancelled for one platform. I think my X button oh, might be playing up. The PlayStation Vita. What's up, Nobody Ring? The real question is, who cares? I think my X button might be playing up. Oh no, you might have to um take that controller apart and get it cleaned. Another day. Well, it's just like me getting a new hard drive. I need a new hard drive. Another day, because I don't have my fucking money. Because oh, I'm for so fuck's sake! Come on, game. Wait, what the hell just happened? What the hell? Oh, tank, tank, tank controls. controls. Oh no. You're the one control. who chose to play this game. Yeah, I thought it would be fun. <laughs> <sighs> and then I remembered, oh, oh yeah, again. tank controls in the last world ain't great. And now people wonder why the people want tank controls in the Resident Evil 2 remake. It's just why. I mean, Resident well, Evil 4 to be fair, controls. Resident Evil 2, you're not platforming. At least I don't think you're platforming that game. Doesn't Resident Evil 2 play, play like Resident Evil 4? I haven't seen gameplay. I think Resident Evil 2 plays much like the original in Dino Crisis. 
Okay, I'm sorry, what? Time out, Crisis. Take Resident yeah. Evil, then take Jurassic Park, then put them in a blender and hit puree. Oh. But here's the thing, I've never seen gameplay of it, so I wouldn't know. It is literally Resident Evil with dinosaurs. What's a hard to understand? God. This what about zombie dinosaurs? Finally, a good fucking game. String, there's a bunch of lives down there. Yeah, I wouldn't got them. Well, the idea no. is, is that someone made like this third energy system that basically acts as equivalent exchange in like, I don't know, typical magic settings. And basically right. what happened was, is that they somehow managed to warp the present time, quote-unquote, to like, several million years in the past. But you can rewrite human D- you can rewrite- you can rewrite human DNA and fly, you can cure cancer, but I don't want to cure cancer. I want to turn people into dinosaurs. Look, Dino Crisis 2 gets weird when they start introducing time travel. And I mean, to be fair, Dino that's Crisis every game. The better. Look. Kingdom Hearts 3DS, good game, good story. Yeah, and then you had Dino Crisis 3, which was Jurassic Park in space. Wait, really? In space? Yep, and you want to know the even funniest thing? It was Xbox exclusive. Japan uh, is weird. Wait, wait, oh wait, it was made by Japan, a Japanese country, uh, company? Ah, uh, yes, Japan, a <laughs> English company, what? Oh, my bad, I thought it was wow. Japan. Oh no, it was made by Japan, it was made by Capcom. Go on, Tree, you can do it. I'm trying, Apple. I'm trying my Play. best. We should have played Croc 2. No, that has just as many problems. If any, it, it creates its own problems. Yep, it gets rid of. Studio four. It gets... <laughs> you have full 3D control, but you have to play the game in a tank. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know you're playing a plane at one point. It's been a long time since I played Croc 2, to the point where I don't remember anything from that game. Ah, uh, next stream, I got it. Ew. I played the demo of Croc 2, and that was about it. Alright. Let's see. Well, strange, Dad. Oh, wow. I didn't think I'd make that, but I did. <laughs> Off by a couple frames. And he sticks the landing. Meanwhile, I nearly died because tank controls. Well, I mean, you could always use analog, right? Let me, let me show you analogs. This is me. I'm gonna use analog now. This is me if I press left. You jump? No. All right. I'm gonna stand still. I'm gonna use a left analog stick. I'm. Go this is me holding left. I don't go okay. immediately left. I go up then left. I go diagonally left. Analog stick ain't great. Gosh, it's like using the analog 3DS to try and fix Mario 64 DS. Well, it kind of works. I mean, at least, you know, you've got something physically to control or you're not doing the second option, which was to use the stylus exclusively for movements. <laughs> no, I'm good. Because that was an option. Oh, yeah, I played it for like a bit and I couldn't get used to it. <laughs> oh, I tried to, but my stylus had uh, gone MIA, so I have to use my finger. Ah, you too, I see. <laughs> Luckily, I own a copy of Mario for my N64. Look, I, I have one. I have two hands. I can't hold a system with one hand. It's just like, not natural. I mean, it works for Kid Icarus, but, uh... Kid Icarus came with a stand. <laughs> Kid Icarus also is, a, you know, you use it for shooting, not fucking platforming. Yeah, but if you have to include a stand to use your control system, that kind of seems stupid. I never found a problem with Kid Icarus. Nah, Kid Icarus is uh, a good game, but, like, I would have preferred if the, uh, you know, you're able to use dual analog sticks, that would have been nice. Technically, well, you I can. Did... 
Yeah, you technically can use the dual analog sticks, just not the way you think you can. Left hand mode, isn't it? No, because didn't they make an accessory that puts on another analog stick? Yeah, but it's only for left. You get, so you can use it like as a left hander. You can't actually use it for dual analog. Okay, I'm sorry. What? Just, yeah, basically for Kid Icarus Uprising, you can use the uh, controller bro option for the 3DS. But all that does is give you a second analog stick to move, not aim. Yeah, it's basically like it for left handers who want to use their uh, right hander move and use their left hander draw. Do you know what the worst part is? The controller pro unit doesn't actually have its own power supply and they can't take it off the 3DS. You have to have a separate battery. Do you? Yeah. I never knew that. Separate. Yes, I think it's like a single or double or triple A. Oh, and guess what? It's not easy to remove. You have to literally unscrew it, the battery cover. Oh, no. oh Sakurai. I love how you have two analog sticks. Oh, this is... now you have two ways to move. Oh, come on. Wait, what the fuck? Why don't you? Hey? Ah, I didn't know Vicarious Visions made this game too. <laughs> they should Wait. handle the remaster. Wait, what's that underneath Vicarious Visions logo? Argonaut? I knew it. Oh, for fuck's fuck. sake. I can't believe Vicarious Visions is fucking dead. <laughs> Oh, First try, guys. We did it. Did it. We saved the world. We did it. Yeah, we did Wait, it. Wait, you could skip it? We did it. Yeah, we did it. You could well, skip it? I When I put the Apple, password in, you... I must have put a, I, I think I actually put in like an all-level code. I didn't think yeah, it Yeah, like was. a master one. Or the equivalent of the Crash Bandicoot's um, super password code. Yeah. I did it. I beat the game. <laughs> world, world record. It's very interesting to see what I'm going to get the final boss and get the final cutscene or not. Just string on AGDQ. Yeah, it'll just be the final. Though... It'll just be the final, final boss and keep those. <laughs> and then the longer you leave it on the screen, the fish with the uh, thousand yards there just keep pumping up on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you're constantly being chased by the thousand yard stairfish. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna put that on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we found your, um, your both string. Man, the shit I've seen. So hey, you're holding hey, out hey, with triangles. Do you want some finny finny fun, Croc? They never stop singing down here. <laughs> they just said one pound fishies over and over again. <laughs> I don't know why people complain. Uh, aqua, aqua, fuck, a quant I forget what it's called. Atlantis in Kingdom Hearts. Atlanta. Yeah. Okay. Atlantica. <laughs> it's it's technically. Atlantica. It's technically optional. Not a good option. Granted, does that? I mean, it has good shit. I forget. Does it have Cura, Curara, or? Uh, it gives you. No, I don't think it gives you Cure. I think it gives you gravity at one point. Uh, don't you need to use gravity to unlock another part of Atlantica if memory serves? You do, yes. Was it, 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 was it, it was... Well, it's, it's called Magnet in that game, but yeah, I think it does. But it gives, also gives you Magnet. Because, no, I could have sworn it gives you the upgrade to Cure. I don't When you do I, it this second Maybe time. it does, I can't. I, I'm pretty sure Cure was given to you from... Uh, cure was a, It was, was given to you from Hollow Bastion, Lion's... Lion's Pride, whatever it's called, the land from the one, and, um, Hundred Acre Wood. Uh, the Pride Lands, you mean? Pride Lands, yeah. I definitely know the Pride Lands gives you one. Because Prowland has that gigantic ass boss fight in the middle of a huge ass empty space, if I remember. Yeah, it does. Well, that's the only thing, is it? Yeah. Huge ass empty space? You mean the normal level? Normal level? <laughs> you mean Kingdom Hearts areas in general, but um, Tish? Um, more so with two. I, I want to do a randomizer of Kingdom Hearts 2 while I stream as well. Wait, there's a Kingdom Hearts 2 randomizer now? Yep. 
There is. Been running out for you a while. You play Pokemon? Which yeah. version, though? Uh, two Final Mix on the original PS2. Uh, okay, so you'll need PCSX2 then. Yeah, I've already done it before, though. Oh. I can set that up easily. What is it randomize? Uh, bosses, <laughs> abilities you earn, a few other things. So you can get the, uh, the. Is the Terra Super Boss in there? Yep. It was the Terra. Oh my god. I god, have seen well. Sephiroth at the Land of Dragons. Oh <laughs> my god. Do you know what I want to see? Is the um, tournament in the virtual Twilight Town? Granted, from what I understand, so, but with that said, HP is significantly decreased. It's like you're facing them at like a level equivalent to what you are. Aww. But they still have their moves and all that, so it still means they're difficult as hell. For example, if you didn't know, if you don't know it's Sephiroth, if you don't press triangle at the beginning, you die. I might actually do that next. Oh, no. uh, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do that after Croc. Yeah, why not? I want to play Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> finally, a game I've played. Which is the only Kingdom Hearts game I've beaten. 2, really? Yeah, I played a good bit of Free Chain of Memories, because I owned a PS2. Well, I one. never touched one. I never, I've never had a chance to touch one. You I don't can. really own, I don't, I own a PS2, I just never had a chance to get one. And Ooh. I don't own a PS3 or a PS4 to play it. Thing is, Chain of Memories never got the re-release here in Europe, so we never got the yeah. PS2 remake, so we were stuck with the GBA original. Mm -hmm. Until we got HD 1.5 remix. It only took them about a fucking decade to get there. Granted, at least, played, at least America didn't get a final mix either. I played a decent bit of Breach Chain and uh, did not beat it. I beat it, but all I remember is Triangle, Triangle, Triangle. Because I was like, man, I really just want to play Kingdom Hearts 2 and not have to worry about cards. Let me think. I started with one, but not by much. I was mostly doing the gummy ship segments while my friend was doing like the other stuff. That was because I was more of a shooter buff than he was at the time. <laughs> then the Kingdom Hearts 2, then Birth by Sleep, then do do do, and then started KH1 HD on the PS4. I'm proud of it. Here's the thing I'm trying to figure out. Do I do it on critical level 1 mode? I'm definitely going to do it on critical mode. Because that's my difficulty because I've been playing the game for so long. But do I dare do a level 1 randomizer? And I have well, I been, mean, yeah. I have been cage 2 level 1 before. I mean, like if, do you have... if you've done <laughs> it before, that's like go for it. I've done it before. With that said, I don't want to do it again. <laughs> but I'm. Well, I mean, look, if John could do KH1 level 1 proud mode, I'm sure he could do the sequel with the same <laughs> stipulus and randomization. I'll think about well, it. Because what I'm worried about is I don't want it to be like a thing I have to do for months to beat it. Oh, come on. Don't you want Ursula 2.0? Hashtag there is no, easy. there isn't. You say that, but there is. <laughs> there actually is. I'm not telling John what it is, but there is. Uh, I've got a feeling I know what it might be as well. Take a guess. Take a go. Go ahead, take a guess. Not a clue. Haven't played what do you, what do you think is the Ursula of Case 2? Level 1 critical mode. Uh. Setzer. Nope. Oh. Nope. Although uh, I would laugh if the randomizer can... replaced him with Sephiroth. By the way, I don't mean in- I mean, well, a difficulty, yes, but also in terms of mechanics and BS mechanics. Is it- is it the Lance- uh, Lance guy? Lance guy? One of the nobodies? No. No, no, no. Aw. Remember, I, 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 I- I'm talking about in terms of mechanics, too. Well, I can't remember, because he also gave me shit. So remember, in Kingdom Hearts 1 for Ursula, you were basically swimming in air. Yeah. So think about that. What's a similar boss in Cage Two? Uh, the in uh, was it in Aladdin? Hey, Somewhere in Aladdin. Yeah, bingo. You're on the right track. Bingo. Oh, I know now. Oh shit. Which one is it? Uh, it's oh, the S. Yep. You can get combo to death. Oh shit. Wait, even with the combo, uh, combo survival thingy? You don't have that in Cage Two. Oh. Okay, it's two. You're all, you you don't have. You, if you're at full health, you can still die from one hit. Yeah, 
you know, because the game just loves you so much already. I think I know what fight you're talking about. Jafar, it's the one where you're on the magic carpet. Cause yeah, cause fuck that fight. <laughs> that fight just takes so fucking long if you don't know what you're doing. So imagine that on level one critical mode. Yeah. I'm gonna be there when, trust me, I'm gonna do everything to be there when John does that one, because I know what it's gonna turn into. Uh, I still remember Pop Centipede. That was a fun time. Don't forget about it. I, I was there, I was only there for the uh, kids who beat him up in Halloween Town. Oh, uh, Lock, Stock, and then Barrel. Yeah, that fucking slingshot. There are, there are quite a few, uh, there are quite a few bosses that can tear him apart. I'll say that much. Do you think you'll let him go for the super bosses like he tried last time? Hey, I've been Sephiroth. I've been Sephiroth for Cage 2 level 1, critical mode. <laughs> it took no me a long ass there. time, but it's but possible. I was going to say, that's only one of them. What about the, the super boss? You know, the will. I'm good. <laughs> Here's the thing, I could actually... Ch the thing about Cage 2 is there's actually a very easy way to choose that boss. The problem is if you do level 1, you can't get the ability you need to do it. Motherfucker, you're gonna Basically, play fair and you're gonna like it. There's a way you can put him into an infinite. And it's very oh, easy. Oh, you can still knock him, basically. Yep. And it's not hard at all. You just need to do a bit of prep to get it. Man, the real question is how the fuck did Terra's armor fi fail, to beat, fail to beat Xehanort if it was that strong? Well, actually, he did beat Xehanort. <laughs> he did? Yeah. It I just didn't matter much. Birth, but... It was too late by that point, basically. I'm gonna kick your ass. Yeah, I got mine. Oh shit, I'm still dead. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much. Oh, I'm gonna kick your ass. Yeah, it doesn't fucking matter. I've already taken your body, sucker. All it really does is give him sort of amnesia for like an hour. Then Aqua reminds him who he is. Also, rest in peace, Aqua. You will not be missed. I really don't care about you. Uh, it's Aqua. Aqua's only problem, in my opinion, is the voice acting. Yeah, that voice actress really does not sound like she's putting a lot of effort into it, but I might chalk that up to bad direction. Yeah, it could be bad direction. I don't know who the voice actor is or what she's done before, but she does. All I'll say is that the voice acting with direction or actual skill is not good. <laughs> Look, Xanor's trying his best, okay? He's not used to a girl body. <laughs> Actually, shockingly, that one scene from the KH3 trailer has more emotion than anything from Birth, than Birth by Sleep. <laughs> He's not wrong. Okay, the voice actress's name was Willia Holland. What has she been in before? About to find out. Because it's okay, it can hard actors. That could mean that she's did in Disney live action for all I know. Or she's actually a video game voice actor. Let's see. Um, born June 18th, 1991, 27 years old, Los Angeles, California, actor from 2001. Okay, got some filmography here. She's been in Ordinary Madness, Garden Party, Middle of Nowhere, Nova, Legion, Chasing 3000, Humanity's Last Line of Defense, Draw Dogs, Tiger Eyes, Blood in the Water. Yep, never heard of any of these. Yep, not a single thing. Are I these know. all movies or are they all games or what? Or TV series? They're, they're films. Yeah, so she's more known for a film actor as a film actor. Television roles, The Comeback, The OC, Ghost Girl, Arrow, and The Flash. Never watched those. Uh, I think, yeah, these might be the CW or the Netflix ones. Uh, apparently, there she's Thea Queen slash the Speedy. Okay, just... I know nothing of comic stuff. Because yeah, Kinawas is Neither weird in that most of the voice actors are known for um, being TV series and movies. Unless it's from a Square Enix. Oh, yeah. Unless it's like a Square Enix character. But yeah, for video games, it is all Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, I'm not surprised. The only one that wasn't Kingdom Hearts, and this was the first role she did as video game. Guess which game it was? Croc. Let's just Scar round, it all, round it all out. It's Croc. <laughs> <laughs> no. Scarface, the world is yours. Never heard of it. It was a decent Vice City-ish knockoff. It was out on the PS2 and the Wii, I think. Other than that, there is nothing on this lady. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm surprised she actually went for Kingdom Hearts at all, considering she had no real... Unless she was a Disney voice actor before. I don't think she was. No, there's no data here to suggest otherwise. Yeah, so it's just... 
I don't know, maybe she thought if she was with Disney, she would get some kind of recognition to her name. Uh, I think she may have gone in because her mother was married to director Brian De Palm. So, there's an entry into the industry. Don't know who the dude is, though. Alright, I'm just gonna, because I want to actually do this tomorrow, I'm just gonna skip to the last level. <laughs> no, we may as well just skip the game at this point, you guys ain't meant to watch. <laughs> you guys get it, this game just has not held up well. It's actually, yeah. Although, if this one's aged, good lord how the sequel's aged then. It's about the same. So, who's the Shrek OC in camera here? That's the bad guy, Baron Dante. Before Shrek was even a thing. Look, I'm just glad the uh, fucking people with Discord avatars of the Norton Aqua are gone. <laughs> I'll have to try, I'll have to get that game set up, because I gotta get the Kingdom Hearts 2 Funnel Mix. Uh, I gotta get the English patch. And then I gotta get the randomizer. Although the randomizer, I think it's just cheat codes I gotta put in. Nothing more. Yeah, I was gonna say, it might just be action replay codes. I'm pretty sure it is, so it's not too bad. Let's uh, see what I can do about that. Oh, yeah, if you want to, man, go ahead. Thanks. I'd appreciate it. Sniped. I feel like I'm doing a Halo speedrun. What'd you say? I feel like I'm doing a Halo speedrun. Well, if you were doing the Halo speedrun, the Croc would have a energy weapon and a Magnum. <laughs> Plasma pistol and the Magnum. That's it. Um, to be fair, you're, no, Shring, if you're talking about snipers, you're thinking of uh, Halo 2, Jackal snipers. Fuck them. Fuck them all. Yeah, vaguely remember them. Oh boy, legendary one shot kill and insane accuracy and reaction speed. Oh, I know like, camera no, ain't great. Most, if I if I know where they are, sometimes they fucking beat me to the fucking shot. Looks like the you only know. other game I've got decent familiarity with is Halo 3. Nah, I just won't I mean I just chose one because it's the easiest. Also the PC version is the best version for speedruns. Oh come on now. Unlike Even the you need to use. Well, you say it's the best version, but as you said, don't you need a special program to limit the frame rate just to do I a mean, checkpoint? You can't. I mean, you can't do that on Xbox. So, well, shit. Like, well, the only thing I remember that gave me any shit in Halo Three or Legendary was the second to last level. Cortana. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Also, just never forget the good old speedrunning strap, running past 90% of the enemies, unless the game forces you to fight them. Well, the way we beat it back in the day was we had one person stay behind. I know. And then, exactly. run and then just the send game. someone else to just run through the whole such a That's what I mean. Me and my brothers did that too. Because yeah. you spawn it with energy swords so they can't be revived. We just called it the sacrificial lamb strategy. I didn't know you were a Spartan uh, 3. They're, they're always sent on suicide missions. It's your destiny. My whole destiny was to just build every level you could think of in Forge. No, Destiny is a shitty is, is a shitty is a shitty MMO light game shooter. Oh, I was thinking of um, Foundry for Halo 3. For the level editor. Yeah, you get him, Shrink. Do you have to start the entire level over? Yep, because I gave over it. Wow. That's alright, it's like two rooms, it's nothing that big. So did this come out before or after Crash 1? I couldn't tell you, honestly. Well, I know what I'm looking up then. Certainly came up before Spyro, I know that much. Yeah, well, Spyro was like 98, wasn't it? 99? Yeah, that's why I definitely know. Spyro was surprisingly pretty late into the generation. You know this game had a PC port, right? 
And a satin port. Oh god, it had a satin port? Yeah, it did. I am. There's a reason I'm not playing the satin version, but there was a satin port. <laughs> Drop 2 was also meant to be on Dreamcast, but that ended up happening. Couldn't imagine why. This is all actually it was because the Dreamcast failed, not because of this. <laughs> This game sold 3 million copies? Oh yeah, Croc did super well. Especially in Britain, that's why I asked you, have you played it? Because I know you're British, and it was popular in Britain. Yeah, you fucking racist. Yeah, um, 10th of October 1997. <laughs> November 8th, 1996. Yeah, that was never... They should have had a fucking check by our point. Look, man, I remember one time... Like I said, past, I got a game uh, over, so I'm not that salty over it. If I had more lives, I wouldn't be back. I would be back here. Look, checkpoints... Are, I remember one time, uh, during a programming class in high school, where we made a game using Scratch, a basic uh, programming... I've used Scratch. Stuff. Yeah, we had to use it. And man, I could not for the life of me... Uh, I ran out of time, so I couldn't implement checkpoints into my shitty game. I just couldn't get it down before the, uh... Uh, before it was time to, you know, play them. Let's have a look. Oh, wow, Scratch. Yeah, that was well after my time. They still I does on just Raw Assembler. Yeah, they used block programming. Instead of just typing it. I think there is an option to type it if you want to, though. Yeah, for us, they chucked us in the deep end and just said, Have fun, bitches. <laughs> so let's see, Croc 2. Um, okay, this game did get a PC port. It did? Yeah. But that's not the weirdest port it got. What did it get? It what also did it get? A Game Boy Color port. Oh, so the original one. Huh. Uh, wanna guess who developed that one, then? But it wasn't Argonauts. I've heard before. I can't remember what it was. Natsume. Harvest Moon guys, interesting. Yep. And Lufia. If anyone remembers them on the Super Nintendo. I've heard of Lufia. I've never played it though. There's so many PC ports of games you wouldn't fucking expect. There's a PC port of Eddie and Eddie the Lost Ed Adventures. Well, I remember, PC, I remember PC was pretty popular in Britain specifically. Well, that was mainly because that would have come off the tail end of the Amiga once that died in 1994. And beat game. Oh, wait, no, is there a third phase? Because in the UK, the crap is a third phase. <laughs> at the time computers were seen as the thing to go for not consoles because you know limited use of a console you can do basically your work and that on the computer and of course while the nes came out in 1987 in the uk by that time we had the amiga 500 and it was just like why would we want to waste about two three hundred quid on an 8-bit machine when for that same price we can get a 16 slash 32 bit computer <laughs> with graphics and sound though yeah, this with graphics and sound though. I got too close. Oh wow. Sorry, yeah, I kept interrupting you. Yeah, good. Oh. oh yeah, you know, wow, a robot. We can draw one in 3D on the Amiga for nothing. <laughs> I mean, okay, it'll look like something on a Super FX with a worse frame rate, but you can do it. And of course, you couldn't easily copy console games. Amiga games? Oh, piece of piss. They tried to put anti-piracy in, and they tried every fucking thing under the roof. Feelies, special security codes, one-time use codes, oh, they tried absolutely everything. Yeah. None of it worked. For the, for the NES or Amiga? For the Amiga. For the NES, you just had the NES 10 lockout chip, and even that was easily beaten if you just lift one leg on it. <sighs> game over, game over. I died as I was about to give the final hit to the impressor soon enough. Oh, because I hit boxes with Jake. Oh, string. I'm sorry, lad. Someone give me the frame data for this game. I can fix the problem. It's not the frame rate data, it's the hitbox data. 
Look, oh, like no. I said, unless the direct's showing me the frame data of every single character, it's a bad direct. I <laughs> forget what Ted says. Honestly, Honestly kind of both sides back. are annoying. <laughs> I don't like this. I don't like the Smash. I don't like the Smash competitive community. I don't like the Smash not competitive community. Honestly, I don't like either. So wouldn't it just be easy to say I don't like the Smash community then? Yeah, yeah but then the you got both sides saying that they're different communities. We don't deserve Smash. Yeah, Sakurai. sure. Okay. We don't deserve Sakurai. I more, I more get irritated by the people who want nothing but competitive Smash, who are complaining when it's not just competitive Smash. I'm also annoyed by the people that are saying like, well how dare you enjoy competitive Smash when I want everything to be fun. Okay, but to be fair, tripping is stupid. Yes, tripping is stupid. Well, I mean, I'm not really bothered either way. I'm just there to have a laugh and with some friends, right. maybe. Yeah, <laughs> every once in the blue moon. Not having fun unless Bayonetta cures me off the top of the screen at 30%. So, so I, couldn't give a sh I couldn't give a shit what stickers they give to themselves, because at the end of the day, my fucks to give about it are at somewhere between Jack and shit. I mean, I just play to play my best. I'm not gonna go for frame perfect tricks. I mean, you should have enough try my right best. From the you should have enough gripe from the Smash community back when Dolphin was first open sourced. Wait, what, what about the Smash community from Dolphin? The second Dolphin went open source 10 years ago, oh my god, we got countless emails, messages on forums saying, get Brawl running, get Brawl running. Bitch, we haven't even got Wiimote support working at that time. You could boot Wii games, you could look at maybe the intros, but that was as far as you were going to fucking get. Once someone started as in basic remote emulation, yeah, we tried at first to get Brawl working. But we didn't realise, oh right, yeah, dual layered, different partitions, who do we leave? And the second someone got those partition patches in, oh my god. I think it crashed the server for a couple of days. <laughs> I'm not surprised, I mean, playing Smash Bros. with Brawl at 1080p does have its nice benefits. Like, I've always um, wanted to try Project M. I, even if yeah. I'm not a fan of that. Did they even release a PAL version in the end? I know they were planning on it, but they didn't end up doing it. Nope. <laughs> no, you need the NTSC version. Like, I know they were planning on it, but it just never happened to me, I guess. Oh, no, because they had creative differences and the whole thing fell apart, and then they made their own shitty fighting game. Experiment. What game did yeah. they make? Is there... Can't remember the name. Sorry, Apple, you go. Is there a way to play Project Dem on the computer via an emulator? On Dolphin, yeah. I want to try that. I always want to play Project Dem. I mean, because you can emulate the SD card nowadays, and that's just one option if you want to do it the easy way. You could find, I don't know, pre-built ISOs of Project Dem knocking around somewhere. Just find them, and then point at the emulator. Probably should just run no issue. I mean, that's what we have to do to get um, Linky to play Rondo of Blood. Because I tried setting them up with the PC Engine original, and this PC didn't like it when configuring controls. And it was just like, wasn't this released on the Wii Virtual Console? And that was just like, ugh, duh, should know this. I only knew that. I only knew that because that's what John wrote. wrote that's the version John played in his review. Well, you can't exactly get it anymore, though, can you? Nope. Hence why emulating is a thing. Absolutely. Huh? Is it possible to actually just get that game, that ROM running on a Turbo Graphics emulator? If you extracted the contents of the world, yeah, I imagine the ISO is just sitting in there. There we go. Game beat. We did it legit. <laughs> what? <laughs> is the... What? It doesn't. He just. Very climactic. Complete? Very climactic. <laughs> so, you know, when I said he was T posing, I was joking. I wasn't actually expecting it there at the end. No, that wasn't him T posing. That was an actual animation. <laughs> Might as well have been the same fucking thing. Oh, yeah, because just having him rotate the model start is an animation. Now, let's see if, uh. This game crashes because I can't load the cutscene.
Why can't we do, do that to the other cages? Because that one didn't have a lock on it. And then Croc eats it, and the world was saved. <laughs> <laughs> and then the world absorbed him through osmosis. And he was never heard from again. Although some say if you listen very carefully in the ground, you can hear him screaming at the center of the earth. And of course, gotta love the, just the fact that, you know, 2D textures on a single polygon. Oh, plane. yeah, they are 2D textures. Gotta love that billboard effect. No, are there ice 3D? Mm. I can't tell. No, they're all. The eyes? Wait, actually, they might be, actually. Yeah, look at them. Yeah, the eyes are 3D. <laughs> That's really creepy. But the rest of it's just the it's... billboard effect. Look, it's very disrespectful to stance on my statues, you peasants. I'm surprised it's and... not already covered in bird shit. <laughs> and now, <laughs> they must perform a sacrifice to Croc every year, or else he will destroy them all. And then reality kicked in and they all died anyway. For context, <laughs> this is a secret boss area. I think it could, if you be, if you, obviously 100% save file, so it's showing the, the secret boss area, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> uh, there's a secret boss? Yeah. What the hell is it? Uh, you, you just gotta hit all four of those gongs. That's it. Really? There's a there's a Seriously? boss there's a boss in the middle that's aiming to attack you, and you just gotta run around and hit those four gongs. Well, that's not really a boss fight so much as an obstacle course. Mm-hmm. Man, look at all these people that did quality assurance. You bunch of failures. Hey, to be fair, there's no bugs. Um, how many times did you fall off again? No, that was um, just that was just bad control, not bugs. They should have. <laughs> how many? How much? How much fucking testing did they do on those hitboxes? Not enough. Good point. Your answer. Good point. Because hitbox, bad hitboxes are a thing. Anyway, I testing. still, I still think this game's fun. This is not. It's like the most six or seven Eight. out of ten game you can think of. Probably more six. Well, maybe we might be able to fix it if we drop some um, hot Scooby Doo lore onto it. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, it's really the Kingdom Hearts 2 working. <sighs> Just isn't too hard. I got PCASX on here somewhere, but I probably should get a newer version. Uh, yeah, you probably should update it. The question is, do you still have the needed BIOS file? I should. Now to get Project Time running on my computer. Uh, let me see. I'm surprised no one's attempted to make an open source replacement of that yet. To what? The um opera the IPL for the um, PlayStation 2. I mean technically that's legally you can't give it out, so probably people probably don't want to risk themselves to Well you can't give the one Sony made out now, but if you were to legally reverse engineer it and make your own, that's yes, fair that game. Is, that is true. Cause that's how some PS1 emulators and Sega Saturn ones work now. They've used open source recreations of it. I actually don't have a PS2 emulator on here at the moment. It might be on my other laptop. Oh, I'll just download oh, and... it. Oh, and I but... don't know if you know String, but PCSX2 can now play PS1 games. Can it? Yeah, I know. It only took them, like, how long to do it, but, you know, they finally done it. Should have you? Well, I, mean, I guess that makes sense, because, like, Dolphin, it's the same system, pretty much. The GameCube and Wii. Well, the, um... well, the Wii is literally just a GameCube. The with PS2, a bit of extra though. horsepower under it and a bit more RAM, that's yeah, it. But the PS2 actually had an actual PS1 just put into it. Yeah, it has all the PS1 hardware in it because it used the PS1 CPU for I.O. Yeah, so it's one of those things where it's, it's, it's just like, you guys might have been like, I'm not going to assume because I'm not a programmer, but it was probably easy for you guys because that's more of a software level, while the PS2 guys, it's more of a hardware level, so they have to emulate actual hardware. Well, we still have to emulate additional hardware, mainly the ARM security chip inside the Hollywood GPU. Mm. Or as we call it, um, Starlet, which handles iOS and IO and Wi-Fi and basically everything that makes a Wii, not a GameCube. <laughs> Alright, well that's... And yeah. documentation for that's still a bit in Fair enough. Anyway, interrupted you again. Ah, I interrupted you, sorry. I gotta work on that. I gotta stop interrupting people. <laughs> well, I mean, it is. I mean, it's called Discord latency. You can't. It can, it can sometimes can't be helped. Yeah. I get it. I'm still gonna try and be better. 
Hey, right, I want to thank everyone for watching. Thank you to Apple and Experiment for joining. You guys can plug your Twitch streams now too, because you both Twitch. Quick. Um, can yeah. I please? I'm so desperate. Please follow. Hey, you can follow us if you do. I've been dreaming obscure games for like the CDI and that, or the Amiga. Yeah, I'm thinking of watching, and I'll see you uh, tomorrow for Kingdom Hearts 2, probably. Well, for world record type, I can do it, trust me. Okay. Oh. <laughs>